The October 11, 2020 reopening of Japan seemed to get off without any major glitches at all Japan airports. Incoming foreign tourists were actively welcomed by the various tourist organizations with signs, banners, handouts, and smiling ninja. Sightseeing spots seemed to become much busier as foreign tourists started to frequent these various sites. So far, I have not heard of any major complaints or that a tourist services has been not up to par, but it definitely will take some time for Japan to ramp up to the level of service it had pre-COVID. Airlines are now quickly working on adding more flights from November, and many Japanese companies are short-staffed and working on rehiring and training new employees. Here is one company who has restarted their training of their staff in English and how to talk and deal with foreign customers. Please remember that Prime Minister Kishida suddenly sprung the new changes in policy on everyone just three weeks ago, so almost everyone was caught off guard. Hi, I'm Mike Matsuno, and this is the Man in Japan channel. On this channel, we discuss more deeply on what is recently happening in Japan. If you're interested in being updated on the real Japan, please subscribe and click on that like button. People had not expected such a quick change of policy because Prime Minister Kishida had just enacted less strict entry measures on September 7th. Then suddenly, just three weeks ago in New York, Prime Minister Kishida suddenly announced the most recent and huge changes to the inbound entry requirements that basically returned Japan back to how it handled foreign tourists in 2019 before COVID started. So after two and a half years, it will take Japanese companies and their operations some time to hire and upgrade their staffing and training for foreign tourists. As I mentioned in my last video, in addition to reopening Japan to foreign tourists, Japan is also starting their own domestic travel campaign from October 11, 2022, which offers Japanese residents a very generous discount on transportation and hotels to travel anywhere in Japan. So now many Japanese are taking advantage of the generous discounts, which are up to 40% on transportation and lodging. So if you are planning to come to Japan this fall, just be aware that getting Shinkansen and other long distance train tickets may take more time than you planned at the JR Miroguchi or Green Window counters. Especially on Fridays and Sundays, the beginning and end of the weekends. Weekends are the main time that more younger local residents seem to be traveling and moving about. This domestic campaign will run from October 11th until the end of December. Another interesting issue that has come up this past week is the mask issue, where new stories have given a lot more time to the topic of wearing masks in Japan. This NHK reporter went out to interview foreign visitors about what their thoughts were about wearing masks. We, we noticed almost 100% wearing masks. Okay. Now, yeah. outside, yes. you don't have to wear masks. Oh. We didn't know that, but a lot of people are still wearing masks, so we'll do the same. In Spain, we have masks for public transport, like here, but it's weird to see it on the streets. It's like going back to the past. Now, nowadays, it's strange in, in Spain. Yeah. The NHK reporter asked some Japanese what they thought about the new policy of not wearing a mask while outdoors. Many Japanese people said they would prefer not wearing masks, but they feel peer pressure to do so, and they did not want to have other people staring or saying anything about them if they did not wear a mask. But what was also interesting was that when they asked Japanese people privately about what they thought about mask wearing, 15 out of 20 said they would prefer not to wear masks. So in general, the majority of Japanese do not want want to wear masks, but the societal pressure, the lack of being an independent thinker and decision maker, and not wanting to be stared at or looked at differently are all controlling factors of Japanese people's behavior. Japan is a kind of mass society or culture that even before COVID, people wore masks when they were sick or they had a cold so as not to pass on the germs, or others when they had hay fever and were constantly sneezing. In reality, it was actually a really considerate gesture to wear a mask so as not to pass on the germs to others or sneeze or cough on people around you. So especially in the winter and spring seasons in Japan, many people in Japan used to wear masks and that was considered to be perfectly normal in Japan. For foreigners, including myself, we come from countries that are not mask cultures. Wearing a mask seems strange. In my mind, the only people who wore masks were like on CNN World News when they did stories about some deadly disease like Ebola or the bubonic plague. And all those doctors and people in those news stories were wearing masks that looked similar to these. 
Thus, everyday people wearing masks was considered weird to me. So I think it's only natural that our background context and that each culture has very distinct cultural expectations and norms, which determines how we react and behave. The Japanese government's stance is that in principle, Japanese do not have to wear masks when they are outside if they are not talking to anyone. However, yet no matter where you go in Japan, almost all people are still wearing masks. Even when I was in Hokkaido in August, the hottest time, with wide streets, Streets and less people moving about, everyone was wearing masks. Also, in principle, when you are inside, if you are two meters away from everyone and not talking to anyone, you don't have to wear a mask. But there will be countless gray areas. For example, is the underground walkways considered to be outside? And there's several other situations that's hard to really understand or know. Of course, riding public transportation and being anywhere inside, whether it's a room, hotel, or underground station, and these areas have a lot of people around you within two meters of you, the government still strongly requests everyone to continue wearing masks. The train companies are trying to have their signs and announcements in different languages to explain about the need to wear masks on all public transportation. The Japanese government's big hope is to get foreign tourists to help inject outside money into Japan's economy. The income from foreign tourists dropped 99.2% since 2019. So the hope is that the new reopening and the changing of the entry requirements back to basically the same as pre-COVID will bring in the much needed yen and strengthen the yen, which is presently struggling. Today, it went down to 148.76 yen per dollar something that was unimaginable during pre-COVID. As many of you know, Japan is a group conscious and consensus society. There are good things to these qualities, such as when the pandemic started and the government asked everyone to wear masks, 99.9% .9 of the people did. But because of this group consciousness and not wanting to stand out or to be looked at by others, in Japanese, you may say, shiroi me de mireru, or as we say in Hawaii, people give you the stink eye. Japan is a conformist society, and not many people will independently break from the norm. So it takes a long time to undo any kind of tradition, custom, or societal habit. Mass wearing will definitely be one of these issues that will take some time to change. I think only when there is a certain percentage of Japanese that boldly start to take off their masks outside will there be any real change. Even Prime Minister Kishida, recently when he attends events outside or speaks in public with no one close by, he removes his mask. I think he's trying to set a model for other Japanese to follow. There will be a lot of this gray area. That is why until now it was very easy just to have everything black or white. Everyone just would wear masks. Of course, there are other practical yet funny reasons that some people keep on wearing masks. Some women say that they do not want to spend the time to put on makeup on their face that is covered by the mask and it makes life easier. Others say they worry about the winter flu season combining with the one-two punch of COVID and the flu and they want to keep wearing their masks. Hope you liked the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would really appreciate if you would hit that red subscribe button if you enjoyed the content. Recently, I've started creating short, less than a minute YouTube short videos on traveling and food in Japan. If you're interested, the link is below. Until next time, take care and stay well. Arigato.